Hi, and welcome everybody to the Winter Circle Sports Betting Channel. My name is Ross Benjamin, your host. It is Thursday, January 25th. And like every Thursday, I am joined by Mr. Doug Upstone of DocSports.com. Uh, Doug, great handicapper. Uh, been around for about as long as I have. Uh, pretty much paralleled our career in terms of uh, years of service. And Doug, how are you? I'm, I'm doing well, Ross. The uh, As you know, yesterday I had a birthday, so uh, very good mood yesterday. So that was all good. And then we, so I, I get to go back to being a curmudgeon today then. So the uh, that's the better way for a me what? to go. A curmudgeon. A, a, okay. a curmudgeon. curmudgeon is, yes, a curmudgeon is a person that is uh, generally, let's say, ornery, not, you know, kind of unsavory. So, yes, <laughs> you just, you get yourself a new word, Ross. The, yeah, uh, there you go. I uh, can always add to my I'm sure, uh, library. I'm sure your wife would, would probably agree with that. Uh, yeah, often she enough. probably, uh, if she doesn't know that word, I'm going to let her know after <laughs> I get off air so she can add that to her arsenal when she becomes upset with me or she doesn't like my mood at that particular moment in time. So there you thank go. you it's for a that, my word. friend. <laughs> Absolutely. Don't forget, so. folks, gamblersworld.net is our sponsor. And uh, you could find me there along with nine other great handicappers. It's there you'll find our premium paid selections, which are uh, our best stuff that we put out on a daily basis. <laughs> and uh, we give you our guarantee that if you don't win, you don't make a profit. We will credit your account back the exact amount of your purchase price. And that applies to all single game and multi game daily packages, as well as subscription plans of 30 days or fewer. And folks, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, uh, the Winter Circle Sports Betting Channel, uh, take a second to do so. You've been watching or you're watching now because you're interested in sports betting. And I can say with the utmost confidence and also with some bias <laughs> that we are the best sports betting podcast on the air today. And uh, not only myself and Doug Upstone, but uh, guys like Jesse Shule and uh, Sean Higgs and Paul Bovey and who am I missing? Uh, Chip Cherimbus. Uh, and soon to be Matt Fargo, and hopefully we'll get Jeff Kime from Os Kime Sports on uh, in the near future. So uh, real good quality handicappers, top flight, all independently monitored, and uh, we bring you our best here. So why wouldn't you subscribe? It costs you absolutely nothing to do so, and uh, where there's no strings attached, there's no hidden agenda, and I'll ask you to take one step further after you subscribe. That's if you're new. If you've already subscribed, we appreciate you, folks. Uh, we've had over 470 new subscribers over the last 28 days. Can't tell you how much that means to us. But uh, for all of you, if you have not done this, go into your YouTube settings and click on the alert notification bell for the Winter Circle Sports Betting channel, and you'll be notified immediately upon any of our six podcasts going up on our great channel. All right, Doug. You know, college basketball, we're talking today, um, uh, the board leaves a lot to be desired, uh, in my opinion. And I'd be On Thursdays. Your, yep, Thursdays yeah, is typical. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're, I'm going to be covering Arizona State and Oregon. You're going to be looking at San Francisco and Gonzaga. Uh, two pretty good matchups in terms mm -hmm. of uh, where these teams are right now. Uh, but in any event, you know, we talked about this yesterday with, I, with Sean Higgs. Um, top 25 teams going down and looking for situations to fade top 25 teams. Um, and Sean, you know, like myself, we look for situations where we will see an unranked team as a favorite versus a top 25 team. And uh, that sort of dissipated a little last year, but in prior years was very good uh, when fading the top 25 teams in that situation. It sort of came back to fruition this year. Uh, but your thoughts on uh, that particular topic? Yeah, well, I, I think I think we see it over and over. I mean, I'm not going to say daily, but boy, it sure seems like sure seems often. I mean, look at Kentucky just the other night against South Carolina, really hammered in in that game. And so, I mean, and it was and there was a road game for Kentucky, and just did just didn't have it. Now th they're introducing you know a new player into the mix, you know, because Kentucky's been super fast paced all year in terms of how they play. And now they got this, they got a, you know, seven foot big guy. That they're just trying, you know, to bring in. And so the continuity, continuity I can see gets a little thrown off, but still, I mean, South Carolina's defense just took it out. And the thing I guess I've noticed this year, uh, probably more than anything is that it's for these top 25 teams, it's tough to win on the road. 
Okay. And you name the conference. Okay. It's just, it's just been across the board from, from that standpoint. So the thing that I am uh, looking for is that, you know, to, to uh, situational stuff like that. The other aspect though, I think that's different right now. And after this season, it will start to uh, dissipate also is the number of players that are older. Okay. Just across the board. So like with these underdogs that have older players that have either transferred or that just their eligibility has been extended because of the whole COVID situation. I think it really adds a whole different dimension. I don't, I can't say I've heard it talked about much, but I think it certainly plays into what's occurring on these top 25 teams and why we're seeing them get beat fairly regularly. Yeah. And uh, all good points made by Mr. Upstone. And I'll say one thing for the top 25 teams, folks. Uh, if you're looking at the AP poll, the coaches poll, or what ESPN poll, those are all human driven. Okay. So keep that in mind. Those are opinions of voters that are in the media, in the coaching public, uh, ESPN staff. Okay. Uh, I look at Ken Palm, and I know I'm beating this to death because I use Ken Palm a lot when it comes to my daily college basketball handicapping, and it's worked very well for me, especially with totals. Um, and uh, the bottom line is, is that I like looking at their rankings. They rank the teams one through 363, mm -hmm. and it changed daily, okay? Not just weekly, daily. And, uh, you know, I trust their rankings a hell of a lot more uh, than I do uh, those uh, posted uh, from the human element. So uh, just keep that in mind as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, keep an eye on the, that specific topic, folks. When you see a uh, unranked team as a favorite against a ranked team, um, you know, obviously the odds makers are telling you they think that team in that situation, whether it be on their home court or the road, is uh, should be favored and should win the game. OK, now we know favorites don't always win. OK, but again, you need to think like an odds maker a little bit. And uh, the easy thing to do is go with the obvious choice, which is taking the ranked underdog against the uh, unranked favorite. And again, folks, I tell you time and time again, if you want to be successful, part of your success needs to be you need to look inside the head of a. Uh, odds maker and think like one because that's exactly the perception they know that's going to be from uh, a lot of sports betters out there. I don't want to be insulting when I use an adjective in that regard. Uh, let's just say novice or people who don't do it on a professional level like us. All right, let's get to our, our games in uh, San Francisco at Gonzaga and uh, San Francisco coming off a a disappointing performance, especially for me. I had them on Saturday against St. Mary's, and they just never were competitive in that game. St. Mary's is a very difficult team once they get up on you, and if they get up double digits, they take the air out of the, out, out of the ball, and they, you're using the 30-second uh, clock and usually come up with a quality shot at the end of it. And if they're hitting their shots, uh, they shot way over their head in terms of three-point percentage on Saturday. When that happens – Forget it. You're not going to catch them. Uh, but San Francisco still enjoying a very good start to the season, Doug. Um, and Gonzaga, you know, I'm torn with Gonzaga. You know, they, I just read an article the other day that they consider them on the bubble in the NCAA tournament, which is highly unusual, especially when they go into conference play. If they're a, if they're projected to be an NCAA tournament team going into conference play, you could bet your bippy. You like that word, Doug? Uh, you could bet that, your bippy. Was that laughing that was on? Yes, it was. <laughs> I'm not sure. Matter, nobody nobody would bet. know that except me, but uh, but yeah, that's yeah. where that's where it's from. I actually know that. So anyway, Martin so, laughing. Yeah. Yes. See so, now yeah, we're showing our age too. Go, the young YouTube out there. Rowan Martin. Who are they? I, I, I thought it was Sig, Sig Freud in Las Vegas. No. <laughs> anyway, let's let's stop there. Well, we're happy. But Gonzaga is a nine point favorite, and the totals one fifty two. Doug, take it away. I will. And San Fr like you mentioned, they had their seven game uh, winning streak snapped against St. Mary's. Uh, I, I myself personally I thought it was going to be a tough matchup, uh, you know, aside from, you know, I mean, I didn't have the game, but just a tough matchup for San Francisco because, you know, 
I see St. Mary's early in the year and they were, they weren't very good, you no. know, just, I mean, they, they weren't playing well. There was no continuity to what they do, but so they really stuck with the defense and man, they're just on you like glue and they're so physical. So, I mean, they take you out of stuff you want to run all the time, but en enough about St. Mary's uh, Gonzaga plays good defense. Okay. They're, they're holding opposing teams to 39.1% San Francisco, I think though can certainly be more competitive because the style of play is so different. Zags are, you know, like to get up the, and down the floor a little bit more, uh, which kind of fits more how San Francisco likes to play. You know, not, not exactly, but more, more certainly more than St. Mary's. Um, you know, that doesn't suggest that San Francisco is going to have an easy time though, because they've lost 27 games in a row on the road to Gonzaga. So, and I think they've, I think they've only covered 11 of those, if I'm not mistaken, too. Uh, Bulldogs, though, um, you know, I think they're down in talent this year, especially in the backcourt. Uh, you know, they, they over the last several years, they've had, I'm not saying NBA quality, but NBA type players, okay, on their roster and usually two or three. Uh, but, you know, the backcourt this year, it's just really lacking in playmakers and shooters. And that, that's, I think that's part of the reason that if they're in the situation that there is, that they're, that they're in. The key in this West Coast, uh, game to me is San Francisco trying to stay in contact. Okay. So we talk about the spread at nine. Dons are a, a very good shooting team and they average 78 points per game, but that number drops to 70 on the road and they only make 28.5% uh, uh, behind the arc. Uh, so in this one, I think the key for San Francisco is to, they have to do, avoid those runs by Gonzaga. So Gonzaga is known for years, eight, no, 10 and one runs, especially at the kennel where they play. And if that happens, uh, I think it's, that would doom the Dons on this one. But on this ESPN clash, I am going to take San Francisco. I think the, the Zags are just a little bit too weak in the backcourt compared to the past. Gonzaga's two and nine against the spread when facing a team that has a win percentage of 60 to 80 percent after 15 games into the season the last two years. And they're four and 12 against the number it, it coming off a game in which they scored 95 or more points. Let's go with San Francisco, Ross. To plus the nine up in Spokane. I don't have a strong opinion on the San Francisco and Gonzaga game, so I'm not going to add anything to that. And uh, it's a game I left off the board and pretty quickly moved on from. Uh, but Doug does like San Francisco plus the nine over Gonzaga. Let me get to my game, uh, and hopefully we can get through this without any technical difficulties. We apologize for that, folks. Uh, and thank you for your patience and staying with us. Arizona State at Oregon uh, is my game. That game goes at 9 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, Oregon right now is a 10-point favorite. The total in this game is 144. Really interesting, uh, the total, because it opened at 146.5 and, and came down to 144. And there's a plethora, I mean a plethora of tickets and money bet on the under in this game. is The last I checked at the source that I use, which is action, when it comes to um, – in terms of the percentage of actual bet being made and the percentage of actual money being wagered, over 80% of bets have been made on the under and over 80% of the money bet on the total in this game has been placed on the under. So uh, hence the line move. And I, you know what? I'm going to play contrarian here because I think this is going to be on the higher side. Uh, I don't think it'll go over by a ton, but I do think it will go over the number. And Arizona State, uh, six and one to the over in their last seven when the total's between 140 and 149 and a half. Uh, in those uh, seven games, average the combined 151.7 points score per game. Uh, Oregon, on the other hand, has gone five and oh to the over this year in all games in which their total was 144 or higher, or it's right on 144 now. And those uh, those five games averaged 158.2 points per game. So within these total parameters, these teams have played consistently over the total this year. Um, the last five meetings between these clubs have all gone over the total with a combined 149.2 points scored per contest. Uh, Oregon coming off an 80 to 77 loss in the previous game. And since the start of last year, Oregon, after allowing 80 points or more, uh, has gone eight and one to the over in their following game. So uh, I like Arizona State and Oregon here over 
the total of 144, Doug, and I'm going to be in the minority with that pick, uh, but I feel pretty good about it. Yourself? Yeah, you know, I, I honestly don't have a, a similar deal. I don't have, really have a strong feeling on the total here, but I do have a stronger feeling about the side. Uh, you know, these two teams are tied with Arizona atop the Pac-12 currently. Arizona State's pretty much a big surprise that they're there, but they're playing solid defense, and they're being, being very disruptive defensively, averaging 14 turnovers uh, from against the opposing team. Sun Devils do play at a somewhat slower pace, just 58 shots a game, uh, and they're scoring, they're right just below 70 overall, and it drops to 65 on the road. So that's why they're three and six uh, straight up and against the spread. But Oregon, to, you know, I saw Oregon early. In fact, I saw their first game. I think it was actually one of the first games of the season, if I'm not mistaken. And they have two big guys, and they haven't had them much all season long. Well, starting tonight, they're going to have both of them back. Seven-footer Nate Biddle, he's coming back. Uh, now, I, I might screw up this guy's name a little bit, but uh, 6'11 NBA prospect, actually, Nafali Dante. I, I could be wrong on the first name a little bit there. Uh, and those two guys are back. And, they're, and Oregon is an excellent shooting team. And that's one of the things I really enjoy watching them. And the most impressive thing about the, their shooting ability is every single one of their guards has the ability to get to the rim and literally make layups. So that's, you know, I haven't seen any team that is as skilled as that. So to, to Ross's point of wanting to go over, that to me does make sense in this case. Uh, total, I, I don't know if you had mentioned, I, did you say 144 on that, Ross? Yes, it is. That's, yep. That's, that's, that's okay. That, that's what, that's what I had as well. I hope we 146 and a half. Okay. All right. So it's come down a little bit. So uh, Ducks are 12 and three at home and the total is 140 to 149. And so I'm going to go with them to swiftly waddle their way to a cover against the Arizona Sun Devils, Arizona State Sun Devils. Doug, that was very corny, but effective. <laughs> anyway, uh, our official pick is Arizona State and Oregon over the total of 144. Doug likes San Francisco plus nine over Gonzaga. Doug also has a lean toward the Oregon Ducks to waddle home uh, and cover as a 10-point favorite on Thursday evening. Doug, tell the folks a little bit about what's been going on with Mr. Upstone and his current results and streaks and what you may have coming up this well, weekend. Big weekend. Of course, we got the NFL championship games okay, going this week. So Mr. Upstone, talking again in third person, seven and one run currently in the NFLs, just really red hot. And then on best bets, which I have a seven unit best bet going on Sunday, uh, most since week three, I'm at 73.3%. Uh, and I've uh, up over $4,100 in terms of profit. But that's not all that's going on this weekend. I'll also, um, uh, NFL props hitting 75%, and I for sure will have a, a prop top prop bet in one of those two games. College basketball, we're talking, I've had a profit five of the last seven days, so making some significant progress there. So that, that's been very good. NBA, 12-6 and six run most recently. A good, very good number there, 66, uh, well, essentially 67%. Hockey had a tough loss last night, but still. 26 and 15 and best bets are eight and two. So looking forward to taking some more business and uh, hit, hitting it hard over at Doc Sports where I'm at right now. Yeah, my Sabres lose to Anaheim and then the next night they go to LA last night and win five to three and overcome a three to one deficit. It's very tough being a sports fan in Western New York right now, Doug. <laughs> you know, bills went down. Uh, the Sabres were supposed to be, again, they missed the playoffs by one point last year. And uh, they're vastly underachieving this year. So it's been tough. Anyway, you can find me over at gamblersworld.net along with nine other great handicappers. And uh, right now, um, my NBA, my NBA money line picks, and I never give out anything 140 or over one minus 140. Uh, and some underdogs along the way, too, on a money line. And uh, last night I had the Phoenix Suns. Didn't look good at, at the start. They fell behind by 16 early on. But boy, oh boy, they just came back and just uh, won in blowout fashion last night and uh, crushed Dallas by, I believe, 26 or 27 points, something in that area. Uh, but anyway, it makes my NBA money line picks now 39 and 14 with my last 53, folks. Uh, last I checked, that's pretty good. It's somewhere around 73%. Uh, my M my NBA money line and points spread picks combined. So NBA sides, 
uh, an excellent 64 and 35 run, which is good for 65%. And keep an eye on my college basketball totals. I'm 51 and 28 with my last 79 college basketball totals. That's good for 65%. Again, you can find me at gamblersworld.net. You could find Mr. Upstone. He likes being called Mr. Upstone because it doesn't happen very often. And I, I think he really enjoys that. So we're going to call him Mr. Upstone. You could find him over at DocSports.com. And you heard all the good stuff he's got going on. And uh, again, folks, like everybody on this channel, one of the finest handicappers, not only in the country, in the world over there at DocSports.com. Doug, there's a like button. Is there anything you would like them to do with that? I would like them to push it, and I like to push it once, and but I would like each and every one of them to do it, okay? Because you keep asking them to, and now you're asking me to ask them to. So hey, please just do it. <laughs> we made that a little more complicated than it needs to be, but that's okay. <laughs> just uh, hit that like button, folks. I have been asking you to do it. You know, it, the thing is this: I don't care if you agree with us or disagree with us. Uh, you don't like somebody personally, whatever the case may be, you continue to watch. So it's just a small token of your appreciation for the work, time, and effort we put in to bringing you a quality podcast and to making you a smarter sports better today than you were yesterday. I will be back tomorrow, Friday, uh, the 26th, with our live show, which begins at 1 p.m. Eastern time, folks. So we're making a change from 3 to 1 Mark that in your calendar. Uh, Jesse and Sean will be with me at that time, and we'll be uh, discussing the N upcoming NFL uh, conference championship games. And, uh, again, if you missed the NFL show on Tuesday with Paul Bovey, go back to the archives at Gambler's World, uh, excuse me, at the Winner's Circle Sports Betting Channel. Uh, he gave out several props on that game, and I know a lot of you out there commented and were appreciative of such. And don't forget, Mr. Upstone, he's on quite a roll with his NFL props as well over at DocSports.com. Until the next time, for Ross Benjamin and Doug Upstone, take care and God bless, folks.